joining me, and it feels like it's been forever since I've seen you. I know. Whitney Reynolds is here with Whitney's women, and I am so, I, you look great, first of all. Oh, you're so you. sweet. And you have got some pretty big things coming on the horizon. We here. do. Yeah. We're in that season where I know summer is coming to an end, or it's over, and we're headed into the fall, but fall for me means my new season comes out. So the Whitney Reynolds Show is launching season eight. I cannot wait. And we're having a big party. I'll get to that at the end, but I want to introduce you to the amazing woman that I have sitting right next to me. Her name is Kara, and she is with an organization that is actually helping CPS students across the city. Hi, Kara. Welcome. Welcome. Well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about Lumity. So Lumity is a nonprofit organization that prepares teens for careers in STEM. Okay, Science, so technology, engineering, and math. You know, I've always wondered, STEM I immediately put with technology because those, but that's what it breaks down to. Science, technology, what were the other two? Engineering and math. And so you go in to CPS schools all across the city and you're teaching them this. How do you go about that? So we have a few different tactics that we take. So over all four years of high school, the students get a combination of what we call real world projects. Mm -hmm. So we go in for 13 to 16 lesson plans and we give the students a challenge. They learn the problem solving process and they come up with a solution to a problem that's impacting their school or their community. And, and this is a real problem. This is a real problem. Oh. And they get to pick them sometimes, and other oh. times we give them large categories and then they pick what is of interest to them. And so it's a way for us to connect the dots between what they're learning in their academic classes and applying it to things that matter to them and things that they actually can understand. That is wild. That is so cool to know that's going on in our school system. You know, I always think back to whenever I was like in middle school or high school, and I remember thinking in Oklahoma, small town, why do we have a typing class? <laughs> I remember thinking that and thinking, I'm never going to use this. I want to be a talk show host. I'm going to talk. I'm not going to type. And I am forever grateful that I learned how to type. And, you know, now I do that skill every day and it's prepared me a lot for the workplace. And so that's what you're doing with those teens. You're going in and really helping them know that not only can they learn this stuff, but they can apply it and get a job when they graduate. Correct. And it, it really is about teaching them skills that help them get a job and retain a job. So with all the technology, as fast as it's growing, we can't teach them on the technologies that they're gonna be using by the time they graduate, but instead it's helping them learn how to think critically, how to work in teams, how to problem solve, character building, you know, showing up on time, being able to play in the sandbox with others, you oh, know, which is, is gets a lot of people in trouble, right? It does. So we're combining all of that together in these real world experiences over all four years of school. Well, how do you go about the technology changing? Because you were founded in 1984? Correct. Okay, 1984. Mm -hmm. And how do you go, I mean, a lot has changed since 1984. How do you go with the wave of technology? Well, it's called sustainability. If you want to be relevant in the world, you need to keep, you know, innovating yourself. And you hear that all the time in corporations. Mm -hmm. You don't hear it in nonprofits as much. So that's what we've been doing. We've changed and course corrected as new technologies come out. We got started just doing basic networks for nonprofits, teaching them how to use Microsoft Office tools. And now there's another company called Google who creates a lot of other products and it just goes on and on. And so it's our job to actually just learn what are the core components that are behind that. It's not the technology, but it's mm. how do we interact with the technology and how do we not be afraid of it. Oh, that's good. And, and so as we get older, it's harder to do that, right? So that's why we're trying to get in really young and oh, teach them how that. to just embrace it and step into the unknown. Do you have some major success stories out there that you can share with us? Well, I just learned about one earlier uh, this week when we were doing an orientation with uh, one of our partners, uh, Chicago Vocational Career Academy. And last year we worked with all of their freshmen. And one of the students, I did not know this, who really rose to the top amongst all the other students with our real world problem solving. His team won a competition and he then got invited to participate in a paid summer internship this summer with a partner of ours, Community Startups. And as a result of him participating, he now is actually getting seed funding to take his concept and his team's concept to the next level. It's a mobile mm. app. 
That is so great. And I found out that this particular student was on the quote unquote red list at oh his school, that goodness. they were concerned about his ability to participate and to keep up his grades, et cetera. But the principal is like, because of your program, we no longer worried about the student. He's motivated, mm -hmm. he's self-driving, and he's seeing possibilities for himself, and he's going for it. Well, and I love that because so many times when kids are in middle school, high school, you know, people automatically think sports is an extracurricular activity. It helps kids, you know, have that extra time in the afternoons to practice towards something, team building. And this is a whole new thought process for our kids. It might not be sports anymore. It might be STEM. You know, join the STEM team. Well, and there's a lot more jobs in STEM than there yeah. are in professional <laughs> sports. That is true. So yes. that's where we want to show them, you know, if you don't make that, what's your fallback career? Mm -hmm. And we have those conversations all the time with the students. Well, and it's just like the same story you were saying where the kid was red listed. Now he has this opportunity to really shine and get a career and I mean sounds just amazing. You have an event coming up that actually helps with funding because you guys are a nonprofit. That's the big thing. I mean you're doing great things but with that you got to raise some funding. So tell exactly. us about this event. Yeah so on September 15th from 3 to 6 we're gonna be hanging out over at Killer Spin and we're going to have a variety of corporations who are having little teams that are going to compete against each other. Oh. But the unique twist of this is that we're pairing up each of the teams with students from CPS. Oh, and those teams are going to be competing to win a computer for their student. Oh on their my team. goodness. Can you imagine winning a computer for spin? Is it for spinning or, well, or are you cycling? What are you doing uh, on that day? Like, what are you competing with? They're, it, they're actually playing ping pong. Oh, ping pong. Yes. Oh, I would be out. Don't join my team. You would lose. No computer. I'm the worst ping pong player well, ever. Of course, we might have a little surprise for everybody at oh, the end, okay. but I'm not going to spoil that. But it, it really is about giving these students an opportunity to see STEM professionals not in their work setting, but you know, just being able to have a casual interaction with mm -hmm. them, asking questions, being able to see how do they spend their time decompressing from a stressful job. And that is good. Ping pong is a big way that a lot of STEM professionals <laughs> really relax. Well, mm -hmm. just for the record, I do not decompress that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Do you do you do it, Robin? Do you uh, play a little ping pong? No. If I'm looking to make my kids laugh, yeah, it works. then we could be yeah, we yeah. could be on the same team then. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're totally. Yeah, we would be in our own bracket of our That's own. Exactly right. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Well, tell us where people can sign up for that event. Well, I think the easiest way is to go send an email to info at lumity.org. Okay. And we'll send you the information. It's a really long name for the registration site. Okay, so info at lumity.org. Okay, and then that is September 15th. And where can people find out more about your organization? Our website is www.lumity.org. And do you have spots where if someone that's listening hears it, here's this segment and they are a professional in this field do you have volunteer opportunities we have lots of volunteer opportunities mm, love it so if you are interested in volunteering please send us an email at that info at lumity.org and the kids need us they do and it's a big city it is a big city we need and, a lot of big volunteers and we do need a lot of corporate volunteers we have a lot of wonderful ones mm. that are currently stepping up and doing a lot for the students but we always could use more well thank you Kara for being my Whitney's woman of the week oh my goodness it was great to have you in here and hear all about Lumity and Robin it's wonderful to be back good to have you I, and I'm so excited for the new season. I know, out. and we're having a big party. I mean, we are throwing a premiere party you for the don't fall. Do tiny. No, we don't. Tiny. I know. I'm from Texas. <laughs> we like big hair. Big, yeah, the bigger the better. So um, we are having a big party, and it's going to be at Green Street Local. Tickets are free. It includes food and drink, and it's going to be so much fun. And we're going to watch the show. And now, get this. Now, if you're driving, you know, hold that steering wheel because this is where it gets really exciting. We're having ninjas. 
What? We are having real life ninjas at the launch party, right? This is the new craze. I, <laughs> I had one on a show, and we had to book them for the party too. That's so awesome. we have ninjas, and it's going to be a meet and greet, and so it's going to be a great time. It's October 9th. It starts at six, and again, tickets are free. They can go to WhitneyReynolds.com backslash contact to get the tickets. But we're really excited. We're kicking things off this season with a show called Confidence, something we all can learn from. Absolutely. But if you can't come to the party, you can always watch at 6:30 on Lakeshore PBS. Definitely. Do that. Whitney, good to have you back. It is wonderful to be here, Robin. And summer might be over, but we're going to bring a lot of great women in this fall, so get excited. Amen to that. Okay, okay. thanks. For more information, check out WhitneyReynolds.com or get social with us Twitter at Whitney Reynolds or on Facebook, The Whitney Reynolds Show.